Well, winter is still a couple of months away, but some folks might need extra warm coats and blankets this year. AccuWeather forecasters say the season could bring intense winter storms to several regions, especially the Midwest and Northeast. Cities like Boston and Philadelphia are expected to see more snow than usual, and in the Southeast, it's a different story. Temperatures could hit record level highs. And while the winter season officially begins December 21st, the meteorological winter begins December 1st. Chris. All right, Chris. All right, so I wanted to really show you exactly why they're all saying this. So first off, here is the 2025, 2026 winter outlook, and this is for December through February. And this is all based pretty much on the ends of cycle. We're going to explain all of the above. So as of right now, the Climate Prediction Center has us ha having a decent shot, <laughs> so an above average chance that we're going to have above average temperatures during the dead of winter. Now, the dead of winter, typically we average a low about freezing and a high above 52, which really isn't too bad compared to some of our friends off towards the north. And then meanwhile, we're also trying to be on the drier side of things. This doesn't mean you're not going to see any snow. It just means in general, most likely a below average season, which has been the trend in general. Each decade, we're getting less and less snow just because things are warming up and it's less favorable. But all it takes is one big one. The patterns that we've been having with the nor'easters moving through that coastal low. If that happens, yeah, we can see a big time snow. So here's the La Nina pattern. Here's what sets up all because of the cooler ocean waters right around the equator over in the Pacific, just west of South America, allows for what's called the Pacific Jet and the Polar Jet to come and meet. And that actually is going to allow for a lot more moisture and a lot more rain and snow happening right through this section. Also, in this area has a good risk for ice storms, so not a good scenario that we're seeing there. Meanwhile, it's warm and dry that's of uh, the further south you go. The opposite, whenever there's an El Nino, that actually usually leads to a little bit more of a cooler and wetter pattern for us and has historically given us some of our worst snow seasons in general. But I want to show you a little bit more detail here. First off, it gets a little bit more complicated. The Enzo cycle, which is just the El Nino Southern Oscillation cycle, is very complicated. But the most simplistic way I can tell you is that it's all based on a three month average. Once this number gets to 0.5 degrees Celsius, below zero, so that's negative 0.5, then we're officially in La Nina. So right now we're technically in La Nada, but everything is trending this direction. So it will be a La Nina setup for once we head into the winter. But what does that look like? Well, the last La Nina that we had was 2021 and 2022. We had 4.3 inches of snow. But as you can see, things fluctuate. It's usually around that not too much at all at the four inches, three inches, a trace to six inches. If you look at some of the El Nino numbers, that's where we've had some of our big boomers, such as the ones that have been feet of snow, uh, in even a given day or seeing a couple of feet during the entirety of the snow season. So what this is really saying, all this data, is that in general, when you have La Nina, it's usually on your side to have less snow. That's not great for the snow lovers, but I always say it, just like a hurricane season, it always takes just one for that setup. So La Nina will be in our favor, and that's why things are trending that way. However, I think some areas, especially in the Midwest, are going to get slammed. A bunch of Alberta clipper systems just in general.